Hi there, in this video we're going to talk about one-sided limits. So this is a continuation of the introduction to limits, so this is video part two. So you can watch the first one um, because I am going to refer an example from there. Uh, so our right-hand limit is essentially when you are, what this is formally saying is essentially if you're really close to A, if you're near A but you are to the right of A, X is greater than, Z, than A means to the right of A, then the Y values that are sufficiently close to the value of L will be the limit. So the, well, what I talked about is that the limit is asking you a question. What are the Y values approaching as X approaches a value, in this case, A? So as X approaches A, what are the Y values of the function doing? What are they approaching? And so in this case, we're defining M from the right and from the left. And um, so then here, the left-hand limit is when X is a smaller than A, so to the left of A, then we look at the Y values there. What are they, what are the Y values of the function approaching? So looking at our example from before, the G of X is X squared minus one when X is less than zero and two X plus one for X greater than zero. So let's revisit that graph and use this formal notation. So when I have my G of X here, then I can say, the limit as x goes to a, so in this case, for our g of x, we're going to look at the limit as x goes to 0 of g of x. So that means that a is 0. So the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of g of x, so if I'm to the right of 0, that means I'm greater than 0. So when I am to the right of zero, so here is zero, and again, this, our, this one is closed, and this one is open. So when we are approaching zero from the right of zero, what are the y values doing? The y values are approaching one. So I can say the limit as x goes to zero from the right is one. Right? The y values of g of x are approaching one, as x approaches 0 from the right. And then the left-hand limit will be the limit as x goes to 0 from the left. So if you are to the left of 0, you are less than 0. So less than 0 is over here. So as you approach, as the x has approached 0 from the left, what are the y values doing? We're approaching negative 1. So then this limit is going to be negative 1. And so that's how we find our left and right-sided limits. Let's try another example. So say I have given the graph of G, a different G, find the following limits if they exist. So I have the limit as x goes to 2 from the left, limit as x goes to 2 from the right, and then the limit as x goes to 2 just in general. So let's look at the limit as x goes to 2 from the left. That means that two, when you see the little minus there, that means from the left, that means looking um, for y values when x is to the left of 2. So when x is to the left of 2, so let's find 2. So 2 is right here. So when you are to the left of 2, you are less than 2. So you are over here. So as your x's are approaching from the left of 2, the question is, what are the y values doing? And so we can see, right, that as x approaches 2 from the left, so as I keep moving, moving closer and closer to 2, the y values are getting closer and closer to 4, not including 4. So now the limit just tells you that what they're getting close to. It doesn't have to be solid there. I'm just asking what are we approaching. So as x goes to 2 from the left, the y values of g are approaching 4. They don't have to be equal to 4, but I just want to know what are we approaching. So I can say for part A, the limit as x goes to 2 from the left, g of x is 4. Now for part B, I'm looking for the limit 
as x goes to 2 from the right of g of x. So think about that. Um, what does that mean? So when essentially we're looking, same thing as I wrote here, looking for y values when x is, but now is going to be when x is to the right of 2. So we're going to go to the right of 2 is over here. So as we approach 2 from the right, what are the y values doing? The y values are approaching 1. And so I can say then the limit as x goes to 2 from the right is equal to 1. And um, that those are my one-sided limits. Now for part C, part C is a little trickier because part C is asking you what is the limit just as x goes to 2 of g of x. Now when there's no little plus or little minus here, that means in general from both sides. And in this case, we're going to say the limit as x goes to 2 what can we say? Does not exist, right? Because they're not approaching, as x approaches 2, the y values are not approaching a single y value. So we say does not exist, which brings us to another definition or property of limits. The relationship between one-sided and two-sided limits. So what I can say is that the limit as x goes to i of f of x equals L, meaning it exists if and only if the one-sided limits are the same. So in the previous video, we had done some examples. We had done g of x and f of x. So notice that in f of x here, the one-sided limits, the limit as x goes to 1 from the left is 1. The limit as x goes to one from the right is equal to one as well. So here the one-sided limits coincide, so we can just say the limit as x goes to one from either side, from both sides, is one. Whereas with g, they differ. The one-sided limits are not the same, therefore the limit does not exist. They don't go to a unified y value. And so that's what it means for a limit to exist, the one-sided limits have to be the same. So let's try another. So in this example, we have this function and the instructions are to use tables in algebra to make a conjecture about the values of the one-sided limits and the general limit, the two-sided limit. So why tables in algebra? Well, we don't necessarily know what the graph looks like. It's not a piecewise function that I can graph or something that I know from my prior history of math, like in pre-calculus or intermediate algebra, is not a standard function that I can easily know its graph. So we're going to just try to approximate the limit by using a table of values. And then I'm going to show you how to do it with algebra as well. So let's start with the table of values. So I'm going to start with the limit as x goes to 1 from the left. I know I listed them in that order, but I'm going to start with the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f of x. So from the left, that means I'm going to have my x values and then my f of x values. And if I'm getting close to 1, I want to pick, right, to the left of 1, I, I want to pick values that are close to 1. So picking 0 or negative 1, that's not going to help me. They are to the left of 1, but I want to pick things that are going to be close to 1. So I'm going to pick something like 0.9, and then maybe 0.99, and then 0.999, and see what kind of y values am I getting. And you might even go try one more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 9. So 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.9. That's getting close to 1 from the left, right? So if you're to the left of 1, you are smaller than 1. So that's why I'm picking 0.9. And now let's use our calculators to find f of those values. So for the first one, x is 0.9. So what is f of x going to look like? f of x is going to be f of 0.9. So it's going to be 0.9 minus 1 over the square root of 0.9 minus 1. And then figure what that is. So let me use my calculator. Rounding to four decimal places, I got 1.9487. 
Now, when you do this on your calculator, you're using a scientific calculator, make sure that you're making use of parentheses. So what I will put on my calculator, or what I did put on my calculator is 0.9 minus one in parentheses, and then divided by parentheses, the square root of 0.9, and make sure that it's minus one, it's clear, right? That it's not inside the radical. And then hit enter or equals. And then that will give you this answer. Your calculator will automatically do order of operations. So if you're if you're entering things like this in your calculator, uh, your calculator will do the square root of point nine first because it will do order of operations first. So grouping symbols first, and then it will do the one divided by point nine so that be careful right so you want to make sure that you have parentheses there otherwise your calculator is going to do the order of operations for you and it's not intended you intend to do that divided by that not the one divided by point or nine point nine so just watch out for that so our these are our values so if you did not get one point nine four eight seven um, double check how you enter things on your calculator. And then um, <laughs> I made my table a little too small here. So let's see, the next one will be what I got was 1.9950 and then 1.9995. And then I don't really think I need to do the last one because what are we noticing? We had 1.9. 487, right? If you just round it to two decimal places, this will be 1.95. But uh, the reason I'm going for more is because I noticed that I kept getting more nines and more nines. So this is probably going to have even more nines behind it. What can you say about this limit? So it looks like the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f of x is approaching 2. Now what is happening um, from the right. So let's look, let's create the same kind of table, but now from the right. I'm going to give myself a little more room <laughs> this time. So for this table, we're going to look for the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x. So I'm going to be looking, same thing, my x and then my f of x. But now I am to the right of 1. So I'm going to pick values like 1.1. 1.01, 1.001, and so on, 1.0001. How far do I go? Well, until I can see what my y values are looking like and I can make a educated guess. So when x is 1.1, we'll do the same thing that we did before. f of 1.1 is going to be, what did we had? What's the function again? It is x minus 1 over the square root of x minus 1. So I'm going to have 1.1 minus 1 divided by the square root of 1.1 and then outside of the square root minus 1. So again, in your calculator, right, you're going to put parentheses 1.1 minus 1, close parentheses, divided by, and then open parentheses, the square root of 1.1, make sure that the minus 1 is outside of the radical. And then hit enter or equals, and what do we get? Rounding to four decimal places again, I get 2.0488. And then, so this is 2.0488. Now when I do 1.01, .01, I got 2.0050. And when I did 1.001, um, .001, .001, I got 2.0005. So notice again, I'm not going to do this one because I'm probably getting even closer closer to 2. So I can say then the limit as x goes to 1 from the right of g of x, or was it f of x or g of x? f of x is 2. And so now notice that the left hand limit and the right hand limit are the same. Um, so I can say since the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f of x is equal to 2, which is the same as the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of f of x, so the, the one-sided limits are the same, 
we can say that the two-sided limit, so the limit of x goes to one, right? No specification of plus or minus, so this is a two-sided limit of f of x is two. Because the one-sided limits are the same, the limit exists, and it is that common value. If they were, <clears throat> pardon me, if they were different values, then we would say the, lim the two-sided limit will not exist. Now, how do you do this algebraically? So in order to do it algebraically, um, let's, let me copy the function. All right, so now that I've copied the function, so if I wanted to find the limit as x goes to one, the two-sided limit, I can just try to plug it in because remember the limit is the same as saying what y value we're approaching as, as, as x approaches one. So if I wanna, I just wanna know the y value when x is one, I can just plug in one. But when I plug in one, I get one minus one over the square root of one minus one. So I get zero over zero, which normally we will say this is not good on the fine. But now that we're talking about limits, I just want to know what are the y values approaching. So when I see zero, zero over zero, this tells me to do some algebra. So as you encounter zero over zero with limits, now this is what you should think. Do some algebra. So what kind of algebra can I do? What we can do is rationalize the denominator because I have a square root on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is my algebra trick here is going to be multiplied top and bottom by the square root of x plus 1, right? Rationalizing the denominator. So what happens when I do that? I'm going to have the limit as x goes to 1 of multiply the top. So I'm going to have x minus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. Don't worry about multiplying it all in. And then on the bottom, I do want to multiply the bottom because my whole point of multiplying by the conjugate is to get rid of this radical. So square root times the square root of x becomes just x. The nice thing about the conjugate, right, the whole point of multiplying by the conjugate is we want to get rid of middle terms. So the middle terms go away. So you can do it on this side over here. So you're going to get x plus root x minus root x and then minus 1. So the middle terms go away. So I'm just left with x minus 1. But now notice the cool thing that happens here. I have x minus 1 on the numerator divided by x minus 1. So I can divide those out to equal 1. So I'm really just left then with, once those cancel out, I'm left with the limit as x goes to 1 of just the square root of x plus 1 in the numerator. And because divided out to be 1, I just have 1 in the denominator. Now plug in 1 again. What do we get when we plug in 1? We're going to have the square root of 1 plus 1 over 1, which is 2, which is the limit that we were getting by trying out values in a table. So the goal of this is that we're going to try to find limits algebraically instead of using tables of values because using tables of values, we're really just approximating and guessing what the limit might be. But doing algebraically, we find out exactly what the limit is. Now, again, this doesn't say that when x is 1, the y value is 1. What this says, right, so when I write the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x equals 2, this isn't saying that when x is, is 1, the y value is 2. This is saying as x gets close to 1, the y values get close to 2. So the limit doesn't tell you anything about equals. It's just saying you're getting close to 2. Okay, so let's try one tiny more example. This will be a good example that um, helps us understand the equality part of the limit. So find the limit, if possible, for these. So use the graph of s to determine the following values. So f of 1 and the limit as x goes to 1. So f of 1, that means the function value. So this does mean 
when x is 1. So when x is exactly 1, what is y? So when x is 1, what's y? So let's go. So here's 1, and here's y. So y is 2. So we can say f of 1 equals 2. Now the second part of that says, what is the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x? Well, and the limit is asking you as you get close to 1 from either side, what are the y values doing? Now in this case, they're also approaching 2. So we can say the limit is 2. So the, the function value and the limit are both equal to 2. Um, let's look at part b. Find f of 2 and the limit as x goes to 2. of f of x. So f of 2, this is asking you for when x is 2, what is y equal to? So when x is 2, what is y equal to? Notice there's an open hole there, so that's not the y value. So we go to the solid circle. So when x is 2, y is equal to 5. So we can say then f of 2 is 5. That is the y value when x is 2. Now the limit as x goes to 2, this isn't asking you about what y equals when x is 2. That's f of 2. So this is saying as x gets close to 2, what are the y values doing? So what are the y values approaching? Right, so this is different. So I'm looking at as I get close to 2 from either side, because this is a two-sided limit, as x goes to 2, what are the y values getting close to on the graph? So notice that the y values are getting close to 3. So then I can say the limit as x goes to 2 is equal to 3. So therefore, f of 2 is 5, and the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x is 3. So this is a big, big idea. Right? The limit is just what are you getting close to? What is it approaching? f of, this is the exact, as I, when x equals 2, the y value is 5. That's different than saying as x gets close to 2, what are the y values getting close to? So that's the idea and the notion of limit. So really quickly, what's f of 3? f of 3, there's an open hole there. So f of 3 does not exist. So f of 3, the function value, this is for price c, does not exist. Right? That is not defined. So we can say 3 is not in the domain. 3 is not in the domain of f. But what is the limit as x goes to 3? The limit as x goes to 3 is... Right, as x is approaching 3 from either side, the y values are approaching 4. So I can say, but the limit as x goes to 3 of f of x is 4. So notice the y value does not exist, but around it, the y values do exist. They're approaching 4. It's just that there's nothing there. At x equals 3, there's no specific y value. But we are approaching the y value of 4. So attempt your homework, start working on that, and then this will become more clear. Email me if you have any questions. In the next video, I'm going to discuss um, when the limits are infinity.